Hey guys, just doing a quick upgrade and I wanted to take you guys with me. Uh, I'm upgrading my breaker. This one here I picked up for like uh, $15. It's for a wind farm. And you can either mount it. It's, uh, it says it's, it's for DC, but yet there's no polarity on it. So I don't know how, the, how that works. Anyway, um, you can mount it. You can mount it in a box. Or you can basically mount it on its side and put the wires to it. But uh, this one here is rated for 40 amps at 250 volts. Now the reason I'm upgrading is because I'm already up to 90 volts on the on the battery. And the old one that I have on the bike is uh, only rated for 96 volts at 38 amps. And it's uh, it's been running warm for years. Um, I just want to remove it from the um, you know the circuit because all my wiring now is all Teflon, RC Teflon wiring. It's, uh, it doesn't uh, heat up or <laughs> drop in, uh, in voltage because of the, the losses in the wiring. So the weakest link right now is the, um, the old breaker. Uh, story behind this one is someone brought a repair and it was one of those uh, cheap plastic e-bikes and this was inside the um, glove box under the seats. And the only thing really holding it together was the two bolts mounting it to the side of the um, the seat uh, well. And once you can see it's separating there. And you can't tighten it too much or else it starts to come apart. Uh, it's got a little bit of play in the, uh, starting to get play in the, uh, the actual uh, breaker itself. And like I said, I, I'm running at its max voltage now. So it's only a matter of time before this actually fails or arcs out. And uh, at $15, I'll leave a link in the description for this. It's just, it, these are actually pretty, <laughs> really reliable uh, if you mount them properly. Um, if they're floating around, they're, they're fine. Uh, one thing I like about this is if you do overdo it and you, you trip the breaker, you can just get off the bike and reset it. Versus a uh, audio blade fuse, which I use for, uh, for years. The only thing I hate about those is obviously if you pop a fuse, you got to walk it. So... Uh, I don't think I actually put screws through this box because this box holds my shunt and electronics for my um, my junk tech uh, display on the on the handlebars, so it had to be sealed. So I'm pretty sure I just glued it down. But anyway, let's uh, get a knife and uh, see if we can pry it off. Uh, like I said, it shouldn't be screwed to the box. It should be just glued. One thing I like about that shoe goo is it does not move unless you want it to. And I'm going to have to get a screwdriver and remove the screws. Sorry about that. Kind of snagged my wire. Yeah, so this is really going to suck, man. It's still warm here in Canada, but uh, temperature is going to start dropping. It's going to suck. And it doesn't get much better with the pandemic, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm really surprised this one's actually held together as long as it has. <laughs> you can see the bolt I put through there. The rivets were coming loose. Hmm. And listen to that. Oh, there's actually parts falling out of it. Wow. Perfect timing. This thing was ready to give. This one here. Well, it's got a little bit of sound, but not much. I don't know if I can just put glue over top of that. That's um, Gorilla Glue. Yeah, so those batteries that I picked up in the last episode that I showed you, I ended up using those. Um, I ran those in parallel with a couple of other cells, and I have that currently in my pack, and the cells are fine. They can keep up with the other ones. So that's uh, my resting voltage after I'm done charging is about 91 volts. 
So what I had to do is I had to run an extra lead and uh, center tap my pack. That way the small red wire that goes to the controller only sees like 79 volts. Because if it sees 90, it won't even turn over. It's the protection in the controller itself. But uh, it's nice now. As soon as you put the packs on and turn it on, it says 91, 92 volts. This thing freaking flies. <laughs> and uh, my running voltage is about 82 volts, which is nice. And, uh, I definitely have to find some way of cooling that motor besides the fans. It's not, it's not enough. Um, the last couple of rides at 80 volts, it was uh, starting to stink. I don't want to fry the windings, which won't take much. All right, that's good enough. Let's get the glue. It's the best modding glue ever. ever. If I can find it. Hello. How's my glue? Oh man, what's going on here? I got no one to blame for that. I'll put my stuff away. Oh, there it is. Get low on it. Shoe goo. Stuff's supposed to be used for fixing shoes. And no one uses it for that. Alright, so I'm sure we're going to put this. It's been going that way. all you really need and that's uh, when it dries it's like a hard rubber um, down the road it won't be it won't leave mess like this if you decide to pull this off it uh, will it'll just pull off like a chunk of rubber and it won't leave a, a film um, I don't I'm not a big fan of Gorilla Glue because it, it leaves that film See how tight these. There actually is uh, on the side. There's printed a limit on how uh, how much uh, torque you can put on these screws and the thickness of the wire. Um, what you should really do is you should tint the uh, the leads, the ends of the leads. That way, when you uh, crush the uh, the wire in the clamp, there it it holds better. This is going to take a while. Yeah, I'll have to move the bike to get the other side. But, uh, I figured I'd make a quick video. I rarely do this. And uh, if I have any issues with this one, uh, obviously I'll do a follow-up on it if, I, if it trips when it's not supposed to or anything like that. But they're, they're pretty reliable. Like, I mean, so. Like I said, this one, the, ra the maximum rating on this one is 94 volts. And it's just basically what it's going to do is going to heat up right here and then eventually burn right through the casing. I'll leave a link in the description for the, uh, for the breaker. And I'll also leave a link for a couple of other videos that I watch. And some other YouTubers messing around with them and, uh, now this guy actually opens them up and get to see what they look like on the inside. Anyway, that's it. Um, not much has been going on other than just doing this at 12 o'clock at night. Hey guys, little bonus footage. I figured we would take this thing apart and um, see if there is any damage from over bolting it all those <laughs> for a couple of years. It's going to retire it anyway. See if we uh, averted a disaster. Probably not. It's probably fine inside. It's just basically falling apart because it's cheap. But there's like chunks of solder coming out of it. Jesus.
Well, it doesn't look that bad, actually. The fact that it's just falling apart. You know, you know, the um, spark arrest through there is looking pretty good. No arcing in that, or major arcing in it, anyway. Yeah, you can see a little bit of arcing there. That's pretty clean. A little bit of arcing there, but not much. Truthfully, it was just built cheaply. It wasn't designed for, like you can see the arcing right there. wasn't designed for definitely for using it on the e-bike I don't know what the hell that is oh actually, it actually looks pretty good this end's a little bit worn down and melted actually it looks like it's even bent yeah it has it's bent the tab's bent it used to be like like that. Yeah, so it was bending and arcing every time it uh, tripped or you turned it off and on. It's only a matter of time before it uh, just arced right out, which it has done a couple of times. Cool. Yeah, it probably would have lasted a little bit longer. Like there was, you know, <laughs> solder floating around in it, and the fact that it was falling apart, it was a, it was, yeah. Give me a reason enough just to swap it out for 15 bucks. Later, guys.